Hey everyone, Olaf here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a bar graph animation in Blender. It's going to be fairly quick and easy, and I think most people will be able to follow. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start off by switching from Blender Render to Cycles Render. So click Blender Render and switch to Cycles Render for better shading. And then you want to click X to delete the default cube. And then we're going to click Shift A to add a new object, and we're going to add a grid. And then we're going to increase the subdivisions on the x-axis to 40. And then we're going to subdivide it twice as many times on the y-axis. So click 80 in the y subdivisions. And then I'm going to scale it four times. So click S and then 4 to scale the plane four times. And left click to confirm. And then I'm going to rotate it. So click R then y then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis we're going to open the settings add a modifier and add a wireframe modifier okay so let's decrease the thickness on the wireframe so uh, make it 0 0.01 and then i'm going to scale it on the y-axis so click r then y then 2 to scale it two times on the y-axis because we have twice as many subdivisions and then i'm going to go to the back of the um, of the vector and add a 3D cursor, left click, and then click Shift A and add a plane. And then you want to click R, then Y, then 90 to rotate the plane 90 degrees on the Y axis. And I'm also going to scale up because this is going to be our wall. So you need to scale it up with S. And you also need to scale it up a little bit more on the Y axis. So you want to click S, then Y to scale it up on the Y axis. And then just scale it up in general with S. And then we're going to go to the bottom of the vector grid and add a new 3D cursor, which is going to be the place we're going to add the floor for these objects. So Shift A and add a plane. And then we're going to click S to scale it up. So scale it up as much as you want. It can be as large as you want, it doesn't really matter. And the next part is to select the lamp make it into a sun and make the size to 1 and then make the strength 3 click G to grab I'm also going to rotate the sun a little bit above the wall so click R to rotate and left click to confirm ok shift set to go into rendered mode and as you can see now we have the basic materials so I'm going to save the file so go into file and click save as and then just save it wherever you want on the computer give it a name and click enter to save okay so the next step is to add the numbers so I'm going to add a 3d cursor on the um, left side of the wireframe or the grid and left click to add a 3d cursor and then I'm going to click shift a to add a new object and I'm going to add a text object and then we're going to rotate it, and you need to rotate it first on the x-axis. Oops, I mistyped. I did it on the y-axis. I click R, then X, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, and then do the same on the z-axis. Then we're going to grab it, so click G, then Y to grab it on the y-axis. And grab it a little bit forward on the x-axis, so that you can actually see the numbers. Click S to scale it down, and then click G, Y again to grab it on the Y axis. My plan is to add um, the text to the grid number 4, so click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. And I'm going to start with a value of 50, so go to tab and then write in 50. And I'm going to increase it by 50 by every fourth grid line. So we just have to make sure it's completely aligned with the text so that when you duplicate it, it's going to stick to the right line because we're going to add a lot of numbers. But the problem right now is that when it's not selected, you can't really see it. So I'm going to add a material to the floor first and make it dark. And I'm just going to call it wall or floor. No, I'm just going to call it wall. And then add the same material to the wall. 
and now the numbers are much more visible and that way it's easier to duplicate it upwards on the grid so select the number and then you want to click shift d to duplicate just make sure to be uh, in the front view or no it's actually in the side view so click number three to go to the side view and then click shift d and then grab set or g set to grab it on the z axis and make sure it's on number eight so four lines for every value of 50. And now we're going to duplicate the action, which means that we are going to duplicate the action uh, of uh, duplicating it and then grab it on the set axis. So if we click Shift R, we're going to repeat the exact same action with the two steps. So as you can see now, we now have the numbers aligned to the right lines and we have a complete we have the complete collection of numbers for the grid, which is good for our statistics. So I'm going to select the second number and edit it and type in 100. We're going to add 50 on each of them, so I'm just going to speed up. So 250, 300, 350, 400, and 450, which is going to be our top value. And if you go back to render mode now, you can see we have a grid and we have the numbers. Which is great. I think I need to make the grid a little bit thinner and the way to do that is to uh, select the grid and go into wireframe and make the value even lower. So I'm going to make it 0 0.005 so that they become even thinner. And then I'm going to select the top number and add a new material. And I'm going to make these numbers blue as you saw in the animation. So let's make them blue, just give it a random blue color, and it looks good. So I'm going to select the other numbers and give it the same material. You can change the material name to numbers if you want to, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to repeat the action on all the numbers. You could just add the number in the beginning, or the number material in the beginning, but it doesn't really matter. Just a little bit more work. And now I'm going to start adding the bars. And I'm going to go back to solid mode and go to the top view because I'm going to add the first bar. So make sure to click number 7 to go to the top view and left click on the floor where you want to have the first bar. So I'm going to have it here and then I'm going to click shift A to add a new object and I'm going to add a cube. And I'm going to save this file in case Blender crashes for you because if it crashes you have to do everything again. Okay we're back and now I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to grab the cube one unit up. So click tab to go into edit mode and I click G set then one to um, make sure the cube goes up one unit on the set axis. And that way the object origin is going to be on the bottom, which is really good for the animation of the uh, statistics. Now click G then set to grab the top face down on the set axis. And this is the value of zero. So uh, the next step is to maybe scale the bar a little bit down with S. So click S to scale it down. And left click to confirm. And when we now click S then set to scale it on the set axis, it's only going to scale upwards and not downwards because the origin point is at the bottom. As you can see, we don't have any uh, bars at all on the bottom, but only on the top, which is really good for the animation. And the next step is to add more graphs. So I'm going to go back and then go into the modifiers. So select modifiers, add a modifier, and we're going to add a or an array modifier. And make sure it's on the y-axis. So click 1.5 on the y-axis or minus 1.5 on the y-axis. Oops, I typed it in wrong. It's going to be minus 1.5. And if you duplicate it a few times or increase the count, you can see that we now have the graphs. 
So the next step is maybe to grab it a little bit on the y axis, so click GY to grab it on the y axis. And then we need to apply the um, count so that they turn into one object. Okay, adjust it a little bit more. So click up to array and then click apply. Right now it's just one object, so we need to go into edit mode and then click A and then A again to select everything and click P and separate by loose parts. And now we have a lot of different bar objects instead of just one. So we need to go back to uh, object mode. And as you see now, you can select them independently, which is great for the animation itself. So um, I'm going to add a material to them and I think I'll make kind of a glossy material. So make sure it's a glossy material and make the roughness to 0.2 or 0.15 and then maybe we need to scale a little bit on the set axis so that you can actually see it. Okay let's try that and then I'm going to make the color, let's make it green. I think that looks good. And obviously you can make it whatever color you want. I usually like to make it, uh, my colors a little bit different from the tutorials I watch. So that's a tip. But I'm going to make it green, just like in the animation. And I think we need to go back to solid mode now and make sure that this graph is as uh, short as the other ones. So click N to make the coordinates and dimension show up. And then you want to look, take a look at the other graphs and see what the set value is. And make sure to copy the same set value so that it becomes as short as the other graphs, which is going to look better. And make sure to give the material a name. So bars, the color is going to be bars, and I'm just going to copy the same material to all the other objects. Obviously, you could, you could just add the color before you started adding an array, but that's just how I do it. Okay, and the next step is to start animating it. So I'm going to select the first bar, and then go to frame 20, and then I'm going to keyframe all the values. So click I to keyframe. I, I, and I. And then go to frame 40 and then increase the set value on the set dimensions. When you have the values you want to have, we're going to keyframe the values again. So click I, 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 and I. And then I'm going to go to the next bar because it's going to start at the same time as this one is uh, finished going up. So click I, 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 and I and go to keyframe uh, or uh, number 40 or frame 40 and make sure to increase the set value and then click i i i and i again okay i'm going to select the next bar which is going to start at this frame i i i and i and go to frame 80. okay i think you get the point now so i'm going to speed up basically what i'm doing is just to keyframe different values on the set axis and uh, give them 20 frames apart for each rising on the set axis. This is fairly simple. And after I'm done, I'm going to start editing the actual render settings. So as you can see now, we have keyframed all the graphs. And if you go back on the timeline, you can see that we now have a basic animation. So let's try to make it 60 frames and test the animation. Obviously, my computer is a little bit slow when I'm recording, but as you can see, we now have a basic graph, kind of like graph lifting animation. I don't know what it's called, but we have a very basic graph animation, which looks cool. And I think the materials look cool as well. So I'm going to go to numpad 0 to go to the camera, select the camera, then click Shift F to go to the fly cam mode, and then you want to move around with W, A, S, and D. And you can also um, use uh, tab to uh, add some gravity. So you see I'm just falling a little bit and then click tab again to stop falling. I think it looks good when we uh, see the rendered mode now. And I think it's almost ready to render. 
so the next thing I'm going to do is to just adjust a few things before we start rendering the image and then after I have rendered the image I'm going to show you how to render it as an animation or as a video clip so uh, I think I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit click shift F again move around with W A S and D and I like this view or this camera view and the next step is to maybe try to change up the glossiness of the bars but I think it already looks kind of good so I'm, I think I'm going to keep it at 0.15 and let's try to select the floor and walls as well and maybe give it a glossy material so click diffuse and make it glossy instead and then I'm going to increase the roughness to point, let's say point one three two, or maybe more. I don't know. It doesn't really matter that much. You can just give it whatever roughness you want. Okay, so point one four four, and back to solid mode. And I think I'm going to rise the floor a little bit higher to make sure it's on the grid so G set to grab it on the set axis I'm sorry if my commentary is a little bit um, after it actually happens I just have to do it and then say it okay increase the resolution quality 100% go to sampling make the render samples to let's say 150 so that you can render fast now but serious to go back to the camera and then click render and after I speed up the render it looks like this I think it looks really pretty so we can start um, preparing for the actual animation and the first step in making the video animation is to find a folder where you want to save the images that are going to render out when we render the animation and then you make then you have to make it into an mp4 file or a quicktime file later on from all of those PNG images. So make a folder somewhere on your computer. That's going to be the place where all your images end up when you make the animation. I actually have a tutorial on how to convert PNGs to an actual video file in Blender. So make sure to watch that afterwards. And then you can just click animation and it's going to render out. It's going to take some time but I hope you like it. And that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching.